Hello, this is question seven from paper one from the 2020 Ordinary Level Leaving Cert exam. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a playlist that has all my solutions for the questions in this paper. And uh, below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it in your own time before looking at this solution. This question is split up in three parts, uh, part A, B and C. So let's read through part A because it's, it's very important to read these questions carefully. Multiple times, spend a few minutes reading these questions. Make sure you get all the information that's needed. Try and put yourself, if it's a real world question like this, try and put yourself in that real world. Pat buys a new car for 32,000. That's how much he has to spend on it. He trades in his old car and is given an allowance of 20,000. So he trades his old car, he has 20,000, he needs another 12. And that's really the first question they ask without asking a question. We, uh, so 32,000 is the car. I start jotting down all these numbers that are important. 20,000 um, is an allowance he's given. He also, that means he still needs to find 12,000 somewhere. It, it tells us he borrows uh, the balance of the money from his credit union. That's the 12,000 here. Uh, his fixed monthly repayment over three years is, let's jot this number down, 44, uh, 443 euro and 66 every month. How much money does Pat pay in total to the credit union for this loan? Well, he pays this every month for three years. So that, that first question is quite easy. We just need to multiply every year, 12 months of the year, Multiply by this, uh, 443 and 66 cents. Multiply all three of these. This is 36 here. There's 36 months in three years. If I multiply all them together, I let me double check my notes here, I will get 15,971 and 76 cents. And that makes sense. Always check if the numbers make sense in your head. He needed to borrow 12,000. So the fact that he paid back uh, nearly 16,000 over the three years, that makes sense because the bank wouldn't give you the money if they're not gonna make a little extra. So that's uh, the difference there, nearly 4,000 is how much money the bank made. Part two of uh, this part A asks to show the amount that Pat repays as a percentage of the amount that he borrows uh, from the credit union. It, oh, show that it is 133.1%. Okay, that's quite straightforward. He borrowed this much. He repaid this much. We want to find what percent of this is this. Now they even give us the answer. So we can do this question twice, make a mistake, and know which one's right. So a percentage of this is this. So we take this number, uh, 15,971 15, and divide it by the number we want the percentage out of. So 12 thousand and um and that's it really well we we can multiply it by a hundred uh, let's let's see what it looks like without multiplying by a hundred first though if we put this into a calculator we will get out 1.331 which that is that's how we write percent that's another way to write percentages this number is the same as 133.1 percent that's in number that's in percentage form they're, they're different. That's why you'll see multiply by 100. Although we probably shouldn't. It's multiply by 100 gets it to look like this one. But uh, that's how it looks like just as a number. Okay, uh, that is, that's part A. Wow, that was, um, that was a very straightforward part A, which is good. Want to get some marks for you. And now let's, uh, let me rub this out and we'll do part B. Okay, for part B, it tells us that a sum of money is invested at or percent. Uh, per annum. Now, when you see things like that or percent, just think of it as a number. Make up one in your head if you if it would make you feel better. Six percent, five percent. It's just a number. We don't know what it is yet. That's all that is. Um, compound interest for three years. At the end of the three years, the value of the investment has increased thirty three point one percent. Find the value of or. Okay, so we go to our um, our formulas book and look up about compound interest. And you'll find a formula in there that has the final amount is equal to the principal, the starting amount, multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of t. i is the rate. It's or in our case. And uh, this will tell you 
in amounts. I won't give you in percentages. Unfortunately, they don't give us one in percentages. But it's actually, the percent is the final amount divided by the first amount. F divided by P. And that is the percentage change. So that is just equal to 1 plus I times T. So this is the formula we just need to do to get the answer to this. Um, and this formula tells us that 1 plus or percent or percent is or divided by 100 to turn it into a number. We don't put numbers here. We, put, uh, uh, we, we don't put percentages here, I'm sorry. We have to put numbers. That's why I need to divide it by 100. So if it was, five, for example, 5%, um, we don't write 5% like this. We write it like this, 0 0.05. So if this was 5, if or is 5, I want the number 0 0.05 there. Okay, I hope, hopefully that's clear. And that's to the power of 3 in this question. And they tell us the answer. They tell us the answer is 33.1%. Again, we don't write percentages like that. We write it like this, 33.1. Uh, or divided by 100, if, uh, if it, it makes you feel better. But this, I think it should be easy to change between numbers and percentages. All right, uh, we just need to solve this. What, what uh, number for or works here? Now you could just try it out, and that's fine, except it takes a bit longer. Let's see how to do it properly. First thing, we need to move things around. Now you're all happy with moving plus to minus, multiply, divide. But what happens to this tree? If I, I want to get rid of this tree, I want or left on its own. I need to get rid of this tree. So how do I do that? Um, it is to the power of tree on the left. So how I do that is I take to the power of one over tree both sides, one over three. So if I take this side to the power of one over three, it cancels it. And I'm left with, I, I've done it to both sides. And uh, let me just make that very clear by putting it in here. Here's the original. And the only thing I changed from this line to this line, I put to the power of one over three on both of them. Now on the left, that just goes ahead and destroys the thing. So that's where, that's how I got rid of all of that. Okay, or is nearly on its own now. Uh, let's go or divided by 100 is now equal to this number. I, you can put this into a calculator if you want, but I, I'd wait. I wait until the end to do my calculator work. Minus one, I just took one from both sides. And then, let's rub this out. And then one last thing, I multiply by 100. Let's do it here. I'll rub that out and I'll multiply everybody by 100. Now, if I put all of this into my calculator, just be careful with it, make sure you're using lots of brackets, double check your work, and we'll get or is equal to 10. And that's 10%, that's because they, they gave it to us in percentages. Um, so 10%, and that makes sense. Always double check if it makes sense in your head. If you have 10% for three years, it will return 33%, sounds about right. And you can do a quick little test if you want. Imagine uh, you had 100 euro, and you put it into the bank for three years, at the end of the first year, they'll pay you 10%, 10 euro. So next year, you'll have 110. At the end of this year, they'll pay you 10% of this. That's 11 euro. So at the end of this, you'll have 121. At the end of this year, they'll pay you 10% of that. That's 12 euro and 10 cent. So at the end of that, you will have 133.1. So you've made, in total, 33.1%. Okay, double check your work. If you had got the answer of five out here, you can see that that couldn't be right. 5% in three years will not make 33%. If you got the answer 20 out, that would make much more than 33%. Double check whenever you can. All right, let me rub this out and we'll do part C. Okay, in part C, it gives another story. It tells us that it is estimated that value of cars depreciates at compound rate of 20% per year. Depreciate means goes down in value. Use the percentage to find the value of Pat's car after three years. The, this is from part A again. Okay, the original price of the car was 33000 In case you forgot, in case you can't look over part A, they tell us again. So it depreciates at 20%. Find how much is it worth after three years. You could do this slowly. You could just go ahead and take 20% away from this. And just like I, I did as a quick example there. So 20% of this, do it on a calculator, but it would be um, 6,400. So take that away, we would get 25,000, 
600 and we could stay going for three years you'd have your answer quite quickly so I'll, I'll leave that to you to do yourselves because I'm going to just show you a little quicker way because my way will work even if it lasts for a hundred years a hundred years would be fairly hard to do by hand and um, to do this we just use that formula we had a moment ago final number is equal to the starting number principle uh, 1 plus i uh, to the power of t this will tell us it the final number is what we're looking for the initial number is 32,000 and uh, one the, the interest rate how much it goes up every year well that's minus 20 percent so it doesn't go up it goes down so we can use a minus there that's fine and they want us to do it for three years so uh, this we can do a lot of this um, here by hand without a calculator. One minus zero point two is zero point eight. That's to the power of three. Uh, we'll we'll use a calculator to do this, or I'll use my notes because I already have it done. This will come out as if we multiply, if put this in a calculator, it'll come out sixteen thousand three hundred and eighty four euro. That's how much the car is worth after three years. That's why personally I don't buy a new car because. I, I, I don't spend this and then three years later have this. Seems like a, a, a waste of money to me. All right, part two. Pat's friend, um, Kathleen, I think, I can't read it too well, uh, brought, bought a new car three years ago. Its value has, de has depreciated 20% per year. It is now worth 17920 Find the original price of the car. They want us to do the same question again, except backwards. Uh, P... 1 plus i times t. All the numbers are the same. If we start at the end though and work backwards, they've given us a different uh, starting point or different number down here. So that's 17,220. And this line, 0 0.8 will still be there. It's just this number we don't know. And let's put that in as, um, let's put it in as p. But this equals this. Let's uh, change that around so it looks a little more. I'll just move this number up here. That's 17920. So it's, a, it's the same question. It's just uh, we know this number and we don't know this one. We can solve this. This is just a number. You can put it on a calculator, but let's move it. That's 17920 divided by 0 0.8 to the power of 3. That's equal, that's the equal to the answer they're looking for. So you just put that into a calculator. Let me see. Uh, it comes out as 35,000. Exactly 35,000. I like when I see numbers like that because it, it doesn't guarantee you're right, but it's good indication if you get a nice round number like that. Um, what, I guess we could test this a little more. A car that was 32,000 after three years is worth this. So does this number make sense? A car that is 35,000 after three years is worth this around about the same a little higher around about the same for a little it makes sense always do always double check your work if it makes sense so many students i i'd say students that get 40 or 50 percent in an exam would get 50 to 60 percent if they just did a common sense check at the end of every question does that make sense does does this number as an answer make sense like for example if you've got some students and i've seen it happen would write down an answer here of 500. That's what their calculator told them. Calculator said 500, they write down the answer is 500. But they're asking you how much was the car worth three years ago? It's worth um, 17,000, 18,000 now. And they would write something silly like that. Or they'd write 5 million. They, it doesn't pass the common sense test. So please do the common sense test in any of your questions. Okay, that's enough of me going on. If you have any follow-ups or if there's anything you see wrong here, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.